Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be part two of our series where we show you how to set up STR trunk. Now, last video we talked about the basic download and setup and some basic things you need to know before setting, setting it up. Today we're going to review the radio reference import feature as well as how to manually input a P25 phase one system and get it running with two RTL SDR dongles. So last video I did talk about you could use one, but for, again, we said the more dongles, the more efficiency we're gonna, you're gonna have with it. So we're gonna use two for this example. So first things first, we want to basically download or set up our system. Okay, so here is your playlist settings. Um, we'll go through the one, each one of these in depth. So a playlist is kinda like you know how you have playlist in music, you can set up certain things. Your channel selection, we'll, we'll get to these these two once we import our system and then the streaming will save that for later. Now up here is your username and password. You could hit the login button and I'm not going to show the password but test connection and OK. So what that does is it'll actually connect you to the radio reference network. If you have again as I said before in the last video if you have a premium account you can have this feature. If not you have to do it manually but first things first we're going to do the import since it's easy. So I live in the good old United States of America, which is down here. Unfortunately, the U.S. is not first, which is fine. Some places let you do. Some websites let you do that. Some don't. We're gonna pick some. We're gonna pick the Madison County system. It is already it was already preset in there because I was doing some testing with it earlier, but I'm just doing it for simplistic purposes. I scroll down here to Madison County, and you have your county trunk systems, your statewide trunking system, your county agencies, your state agencies, your national agencies. State agencies are things like your state police, your your things that are used by your state. Your national agencies is, you know, your ACARS, your Civil Air Patrol, your Coast Guard, that kind of stuff. FRS, GMRS, ICE, and uh, MERS, and all that kind of stuff. But we're focused on the county. We're focused on either the county agencies or the county trunking systems. Now for this video we're doing a P25 Phase 1. As you can see I have the Army Depot. We're actually going to do the Madison County Public Safety System. And from this page you can see the, the different sites. Now you can import both sites if you want. It only scan one site at a time. Funny thing is in my area the south side doesn't really see a lot of traffic. The north one's where all, this, all the uh, traffic comes from. You're going to highlight just by clicking on it. You're going to see the frequencies down here. Now, if you do have a um, a system that has multiple control channels, you're probably wanting to just do all the control channels. It doesn't have this one does not have alternate control channels like a uh, Motorola system would. This is actually a Harris system, so I would just select the control channels, and those are indicated by in the last video. If you saw the radio reference site, you will see the red frequencies on there. Those are actually the control channels. Now your configuration, you can do it for each frequency or all of it. You can change the system, the site, the name. I'm not going to change any of it. You can see I don't have an alias list here. I'm going to create a new alias list and we're going to name it Madison. Now a alias list is something where you can store all your talk groups which we'll get to in a second. So this is usually check, go to channel editor, but since we're doing more with this, I'm going to go ahead and just hit create channel configuration, and it will actually go to the channels tab. Next, you want to come down here to talk group view, and you can either import all of these, or you can do them one by one. So, you know, I can go click on one and select one by one to import it, or you can just import all of them. I usually keep the set encrypted talk groups to mute it on because I don't want to hear transformers. <laughs> it's kind of like what encryption sounds like, but if you want to keep if you want to listen to encryption, that's fine. The only thing you're going to hear is a transformer, <laughs> a transformers like a Decepticon or something, but I usually keep that checked. You can hit import all talk groups and again, as I'm see, I missed that step. I need to put an alias. It'll actually shake for you there. It's going to be for Madison. I'm going to go ahead and import all, and you'll, it immediately does, you'll see the alias down here. This went blank, it actually put the uh, alias list. Come over here to channels. We're done by the import, by the way. You're done with that. We can click on this, we can change the system, the site, the name. Auto start is something as soon as the, the uh, program opens up, SDR trunk 
opens up and fires up, it will automatically start it for you. I recommend keeping it down to one system because if you if you have the resources to scan two systems, that's fine, but you're going to need at least four RTL SDR dongles to do this. So in my opinion, if you have less than four, go on ahead and keep auto start to one site only, if that makes sense. So I'm going to turn mine on. You can have the order start, like this one's priority, number one, two, three, four, and so on. Alias list is Madison. You can change that if you want. Preferred tuner, that's up to you. It just depends on maybe one tuner works better than the other for signal. You can do that. So when I say preferred tuner, more exactly, that is the tuner that's going to lock onto the control channels. So in my opinion, I would just keep it's they're both the same so I'm just gonna leave none now your frequencies you can add and remove control channels for example the only one that's really used is 8564875 I'm gonna keep these two here for simplistic purposes now rotation delay you can actually change how many milliseconds it rotates between uh, channels the control channels I keep mine at low because it captures the uh, the signal pretty quick modulation C4FM or LSM C4FM is single site frequencies, meaning there's only one tower broadcasting the information on that frequency. LSM is going to be your linear simulcast mode. A lot of public safety agencies use this, and that's the biggest thing about a radio that has been having some radio enthusiasts scratching their heads, including right next to encryption, actually. And it recently, a couple years ago, we've actually finally gotten scanners like the SDS-100 and the Unication G4 that can combat LSM. But before that, or um, those are very expensive, 600 bucks, really expensive radios. I actually spent 650 or no, 550 on my pager communication. And before then, I actually used this because it was easier and cheaper. So you're going to make sure LSM is selected. Again, you can check by your radio reference database. Or if it doesn't do that, you can just test these and see which one works better for you. You can select in more data calls. Data calls will actually take up an SDR slot so if there's a data call being emitted or transmitted it will use that SDR to to decode the data call so I just ignore that because I don't really care about the data calls I'm more, I'm more worried about the voice down here is logging we close these two logging you can do you can decode log at all I don't do that you can if you want you can also record also that's up to you I don't really do that and you're gonna hit save then you can see your auto start is checked, and you can hit the play button right here as well. So we're going to hit play just really quick, and we're going to minimize this, come back over here to here, and you can see we have control. And like in the last video we talked about this, it is kind of laggy, unfortunately. Um, now what's nice is you can right click and... Um, that must be a new feature. I don't remember that. I can actually show it's encrypted. That's pretty new. So what it'll do is you can you can come down here. You can change the color. I'm gonna disable the Spectrum waterfall because it is very laggy at the moment to save me some uh, CPU usage. But you can also ch change between the two dongles. So actually, let me let me set up here. Hold on. So yeah. So you, it'll show you between where the two are scanning. Let me bring this up actually. So as you can see here, you double click or you can right click or double tap for Mac. And you can do that configuration like we showed last time. You can also do um, your channel output, your mute, your volume. You can also configure it. Again, I just, like we said last time, you can configure it. Now down here again, control the decoder, the from and to. Now this control will stay the same no matter what. What you see on the control side is exactly what you're going to see every time. It's going to look exactly like this except the frequency may be different and the decoder might be different depending on what type you're decoding. And in messages, this is some very technical stuff. This is, it tells you exactly what's going on in the system. And if you come over here, you can actually filter these out by the way to certain messages. But if you come over here to events and details, it'll actually show you the neighboring sites, what current site you're on, the NAC, the WACAN, all that kind of stuff, the base, the base bandwidth, your your base frequency and your transmit offset. It's got all that fancy stuff on it. Usually on a Motorola system, this is a lot more in depth than a Harris system. 
I, I don't fully understand why, but so we're actually going to sit here and oh, there it goes. So you can see where it'll actually branch down and it will show a call, the decoder, who it's from, like the, uh, it'll, the from is going to be your, your radio ID. So each radio on the system has its own ID and usually public safety agencies on a trunking system will have their IDs in a certain range for you to actually take note of and and if you see an ID in that range you know exactly so for example here in Richmond Kentucky our police and fire use a 30 their our ID start with 30 and EMS in the county starts with 90 so you can kind of if you learn your radio IDs you can actually gauge especially on talkers that you don't have have imported or from the database you can actually fill in the blanks yourself the two is actually going to be the talk group so you can see 05542 that's the talk group that 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 radio is transmitting to the alias as you saw down there it'll actually show you the radio alias that is being the alias that that talk group is assigned to it'll also give you a channel and what frequency it's being controlled from or what frequency it's being received from and you also have the the uh, channel name so I'm gonna let it um, wait for it to key up again and I'll show you what I mean so as you can see, to dispatch. 1098 with that Lincoln Hall traffic 1108. so as you can see it did show the frequency and then the channel name is traffic meaning there's traffic coming through you can kind of you probably heard it on my microphone I unfortunately do not have um, input audio for some reason so you really couldn't hear it but luckily I had turned up to where you could hear it hopefully on this recording when I go to post edit but um that's the basic on how to set it up I mean again two years ago you had to manually input it yourself but now it's so much easier and so much quicker than what it used to be it kind of reminds me of if you all know unit it has their zip code feature it's kind of like that with the database it's very easy and very quick to set up now when it comes to setting it up manually that's where it gets interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off the system. I'm going to delete everything I just did and start from scratch so I can show you how to do it if you don't have that premium subscription or you don't have the money to pay for premium for that feature. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and I will be right back. Okay, so from this point, again, I've reset all the information we just imported and we're going to start from where you don't have that radio reference import. So again, you want to come over here to playlist, playlist editor. First, you want to start with the channels tab. You're going to click new, and you're going to have all of these decoders as we talked about last time. Again, AM, AM, DMR, LTR, MTP, 1327, narrow, narrow band FM, LTR passport, phase one and phase two. The system I'm scanning is a phase one, so I'm going to click phase one. And you're going to need some of this information. Now, for the system, I'm going to put Madison county you can name it whatever you want site I'm gonna put north site name just gonna have test just for fun you can name that whatever you want it doesn't really change anything so again we talked about you can do auto star I'm gonna do that start order alias list I'm actually gonna create a new alias list for this scenario so I'm gonna put Madison uh, test hit OK and it's popped up right there you're gonna to go to your source and again you can put in your frequency so 856.4875 you want to add your control channels now remember you want to add your control channels Again, I'm just gonna put a random frequency in here because I already know my main control channel but you want to put the control channels only in here so that way it'll pick it up now if you have a system where any of the channels could be a control channel unfortunately you gotta add them all together then you can prefer tuner. I don't have that. I'm going to have the delay down to 40 millisecond, or 400 milliseconds. Correction. Come down here. I'm going to keep it at LSM. You can see repeaters and non-simulcast trunk systems. LSM is simulcast trunking systems. LSM. Ignore data calls, logging, and recording. We talked about earlier. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit save. Now, don't start because if you hit start, it's not going to decode anything. Okay, so we can come over here to alias. And first things first is we want to make sure we have the correct list because. Again, if you had the wrong list, you're not going to have the wrong talk groups showing up. So we put we selected Madison Test for this one. As you can see, I did add a talk group previously. 
So what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a, I'm going to actually delete this and show you it from scratch. You're going to collect, select new. Now again, it's going to show up everything blank. Your alias is the actual channel. So we're going to do RPD for Richmond Police, DSP for dispatch. Our group is going to be RPD for just Richmond Police Department because the group is like the group of aliases you want. So say, you know, you have multiple channels. So say fire's got their dispatch and their fire ground channels. You just want to put the group as fire because that way you can discern from each group and you can actually order these and select them. So that way you can keep it more streamlined. I'm going to have listen selected because it'll actually listen to the talk group. If I turn listen off, I, it does mute it. Again, if you're, if you have all the talk groups imported, you know, maybe public works, you don't want to listen to, you can just turn listen off. Priority, I keep it at zero. You can change the priority. So maybe you want to hear the fire tone out more importantly than the fire ground. You can change that around. Color, this is th this part and this part's optional. I have a separate blue for police. And the icon, this is optional as well, just to make it easier to discern and tell between the different, the different uh, talk groups. Identifiers. Now, this one is very important. You have to set this up right or else you will not see the talk group come over to the system. So we have all the different types. We're focused on Ethico P25. We're coming over here to talk group. You have, the, you have a range. So if you just don't want to do one talk group, you can do a range of talk groups. So, for example, I have something called a wild card set up where all the talk groups that I have saved, they don't only receive those, but I want to log and record the ones that I don't see. So for example, if talk group 6651 is not in the database, nor is it in my talk group list, if I have the wild card set up, I can listen to it still and log it. So a talk group range, it's not just one talk group. It could be a number of talk groups. It could be one to like 655739. So what is just cool is because about that range, you can go from the lowest number talk group to the highest. So you can literally scan the entire system with just one alias. But if you want to, but usually for me, I go by one talk group. Our talk group for Richmond Police is going to be 8151. And again, this is in the database. You'll see if you go down the side on the radio reference, you saw in that last video for the Metro Safe, there was LMPD for Little Metro Police 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so really quick, I'm on the radio reference database. I want to show you what I mean by when I talked about the, the LMPD talk groups. So I'm on the Madison County system for we actually imported this information. And to do it manually, you can see, as we talked about in the last video, you have the uh, talk groups and the, uh, so the frequencies, excuse me. And you can see, come on all the way down here, you have 8151 for RPD. You can... Uh, get this information from here you can follow the alpha tags as your alias list or correction your alias name as you saw I put RPD DSP um, but the the DEC is decimal this is where you want to get your number and you can do this for and we'll talk about here in a minute you can do it for all the talk groups and all the sites as well so I just wanted to show you that really quick um, I did come back and record this at a later date, but I thought I'd just include that to show you what it looks like because I kind of left it out by accident. So let's go back to uh, setting up the talk group. This is 8151 for mine. Click off of it. Talk group 8151, protocol APCO P25. Looking good. Streaming and actions. Streaming we'll talk about later. Actions, you can run scripts. You can add a beep or play an audio clip. Every Either every time it comes up, which is pretty cool. So you hit save. You can see here it'll show your alias, which is the, RP, the Richmond Police Department Dispatch DSP group RPD color dark navy blue. Icons a police car. Listens default. If I turn listen off and hit save, it'll mute the uh, talk group. It'll still come up as an alias on the screen, but it won't. You won't hear audio come through if it comes over with listen disabled. Set record, it'll tell you if it streams, your IDs. Now, you would think that it would say 8151 for your ID, but it, you know how it says IDs, that stands for the identifiers. There's only one identifier, which it'll only come over when it see, when the talk group shows 8151. So other than that, everything looks good here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to channels, we're going to hit start, and we're going to minimize this here. We're going to pull it up, and we're going to wait for RPD to show up. Now, you will see it come up. Because on the alias, it will show the police car and it will say RPD DSP in the navy blue feature. So we're going to wait and um, we'll show you when it comes up.
So as you can see, RPD just keyed up there. It did show the alias right here. Now it is it was encrypted, so it will show it is encrypted. If it, if unencrypted traffic does come through, it will say RPD DSP right here. Now if you don't have an alias set up for a talk group that comes over, so say for example 5601 is EMS, if I don't have that alias assigned, so say for example I went back and I did EMS at 5601, made it say EMS1 with a little ambulance, it would it, it's only going to show, if I don't have it assigned, it's just going to have the talk group number, and then it'll show the talk group number up here instead of the alias. So again, you can listen to traffic without the alias, but it becomes a lot harder to uh, it, it's a lot harder to keep up with all the talk groups if you don't assign them and have aliases for them because if you don't have an alias you're basically listening to everything on the system and you can't mute what you don't want to listen to. So again, for example, if you don't like listening to Public Works and you listen to Fire and Public Works but you don't want to listen to Public Works. So if you don't have those alias for Public, public Works assigned, it's not going to mute it unless you create the alias and mute it yourself as we saw back here. Other than that, that is the basic setup for an APCO P25 Phase 1 system. I know these videos are super long, but again, I'm not the best at public speaking and I stutter a lot. And this is all improvised. So um, hopefully that explains everything. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, go ahead and put it in the comments and I can help answer them the best I can of my to my ability. On the next video, we're going to talk about basically how to set up a DMR system as well. Uh, DMR was just added so you know that's going to be nice. It's fresh in everybody's minds. Also we will talk about how to scan a conventional program. SDR trunk is not really designed for scanning conventional personalities but you can set it up to do conventional. You can either do one frequency or multiple. It doesn't scan as fast as a normal scanner would but it is still it is still possible. And and if you haven't seen the first video where we talk about how to set up the tuner and how to install the program, I will link the video down below for part one to watch that. Um, you know, maybe you're coming to this video because, you know, the stuff I explained in part one you already have finished. You just want to see how you get it set up. But, again, next video we'll talk about DMR. And if you haven't seen the previous video, please take a look at it. And I will see you all in the next video.